completely understand. Okay, now we're recording it. Uh, we completely understand if you're a nonprofit and you jumped into this by accident, but yep, you're in the consultant collaborative group. So we we thank you for coming. We will give you uh, an hour of your day back and uh, we'll we'll see you on uh, on some future calls. Thank you for uh, those of you that are members of our consultant collaborative. We're going to do a quick introduction. Um, and by quick, what we mean is I'm going to go around, I'm going to try to catch everybody uh, based on the participant name in here and just call on you one at a time. Introduce yourself, just your name, your company, and what kind of consulting you do. So uh, I'll give you the example. I'm Patrick Jinks. I'm in Columbia. I'm president of the Jinx Perspective Group, and uh, we do leadership coaching and strategic planning, among a few other things. Boom, there you go. 10 seconds. So uh, we're going to go around the room, and I know these positions move around on us some, so if I miss you, we'll, we'll catch you at the end here. Um, Desmond, a, thank you for being here. We, do we have any other uh, Together SC staff in the room yet? If so, jump in. Um, let's go around the room. Betty, introduce yourself. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Betty Parker. I'm the owner of Sharper Development Solutions here in Columbia. We are a training and development company specializing in leadership development, and I'm happy to be here. Good to see you again, Patrick. Yeah, you too, Betty. Thanks. Uh, Amy. Here we are. <laughs> Forgive my post-run appearance, but I am delighted to be here this morning. I'm Amy Coward with AC Public Relations. And I do public relations, media, um, media relations, and event planning. And I am going to be adding some uh, disc facilitation here in the next couple of months to help people with their internal communications as well. Nice to see oh, everybody. Yeah, you too. Already been on a run this morning. You make me sick. Yes. Okay, uh, let's go to Bates. Good morning. Uh, I I have not been running and did not expect to be wearing flannel in <laughs> in April. <clears throat> but uh, my name is Bates Childress. I am the uh, founder and and uh, CEO of Donor Centric Development. We are a full service uh, fundraising consulting company, and we're in Charleston. Awesome. Thanks, Bates. Uh, Shamley. Hi there, I'm Chamley McGuire, and I'm with Heighten Development, which is based in Spartanburg, although we do work lots of places and primarily consult in strategic planning and um, organization assessment, especially when organizations are going through a lot of change or growth. Excellent. Good to see you, Chamley. Lori, good morning. Good morning. Um, Lori Roven, um, officially, I'm um, L. Roven Nonprofit Solutions, or I guess unofficially. Um, I specialize in interim executive director. I'm on my third interim currently um, with Compass of Carolina. Here I'm in Greenville. Here in Greenville, um, I was the interim for the Period Project and um, Cooper Reese Healing Community. Which, if you haven't heard of Cooper Reese, it's a residential mental um, illness program for adults that is in North Carolina, but if you know anyone that needs those services, um, they accept individuals uh, nationwide. Oh, all right. Good to see and you, I also Lord. do grant writing for folks, but mostly interim. Okay. Nice to see everyone. Awesome. Claire, good morning. Hi, I'm Claire Jordan, Vice President at CapDev Capital Development Services is the full name. We do um, nonprofit um, fundraising, consulting, philanthropy work, and executive search. Um, we are based in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. We work statewide in all three of those states, as well as a few other states. Awesome. Good to see you, Claire. Let's go to Ian. Good morning. Ian Mutton with Elevator. And we are a, a leadership consulting firm that uh, seeks to uh, reduce overwhelm for our clients through a focus on strategy, process, and well-being. Wow, awesome. Uh, Katie. 
Good morning, y'all. I'm going to stay off because I have hot yoga hair. Uh, my name is Katie Zenger. I work for my company called Zenger Strategies. I'm based in Columbia, South Carolina, um, and I do a lot of work with nonprofits uh, across the state. Um, and I do well, some strategic planning, but mostly a lot of program management and uh, program evaluation from a public health background. Thanks. Thanks, Katie. Kim. Good morning, everybody. Kim Fabian, also with Elevator. I should mention that our firm, is, I work with Ian, our firm is based in Greenville, but we do uh, work throughout the East Coast. Awesome. Welcome to the call. Mary Dell, good morning. Oh, she put in the chat that she has spring break. Was that, oh, there she is. <laughs> oh. Yeah, kids are home, spring break. Things are wild here. Um, I, my name is Mary Dell Hayes and I'm Stopgap Solutions. I do a lot of interim executive work and project management and a little bit of fundraising coaching for new development directors. Awesome. And 20 other things that we don't have time to talk about, huh? Let's see, Miriam. Good morning. I'm sorry I'm off camera. I did have a run this morning as well, so I'm still recovering. But my name is Miriam Dix, and I am the uh, operations peer uh, network facilitator for Together SC, and I own my own company, 180 Management Group. We are a management consulting firm, um, and we also provide leadership consulting as well, and we're located here in the upstate of Greenville, South Carolina. All right, and let's go to Melissa. Good morning, guys. I'm with ISSA Facilitation. We make team offsites and board retreats and strategic planning half day sessions productive and creative and memorable um, and fun for all involved. So we're meeting and workshop facilitators. Thanks for thanks for having us, Patrick. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Sharon. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Sharon McGee. I'm president and founder of HR Cares RX. I am a human resources consulting firm where I provide training, um, executive or um, management coaching, also um, compensation studies, you know, pretty much anything that falls under the HR spectrum. Uh, that's one side of my hat. And the other side of my hat, I also uh, provide uh, small businesses, technical assistance, you know, from startup to getting certifications um, and also making connections. So just happy to be here this morning. Thank you. Very good. Good to see you. Uh, Jessica Harrell just came on. Jessica, we're just doing quick introductions of who we are and what we're consulting on. Go right ahead. Good morning. Um, I am actually not a consultant, but I wanted to come in and um, listen to what you guys are utilizing. And um, I work for the South Carolina Tennis Association and we do a lot of meeting facilitation. Um, so I thought that there may be some tips and tricks that I'd be able to use. All right. Very good. And um, let's see. Desmond, I have seen Sean Edwards try to get on about five times and I keep letting her in, but she keeps disappearing and trying to get back on. So I don't know. I'm here, Patrick. Oh, you are here. There she is. <laughs> yes, I'm just preparing a cup of tea. Ah, okay. So good morning, everyone. Dr. Sean Edwards. I'm an organizational development consultant and owner of Solutions by Sean Edwards, where we focus on equity. equity and that's equity with the foundation of DEI strategies as well as um, organizational development from an HR perspective and looking at board governance and, and a lot of board training and board engagement. And so happy to be here with you all. We are based in Charleston, South Carolina. However, we have clients now spreading across the US. And so we are I'm very happy to work with our nonprofit and for-profit individuals. And so happy to be here and happy to meet all of you. Awesome, thank you, Sean. Uh, Paige Stevenson is with us, and she is also not a consultant, but she is the board chair of Together SC, so she can get on any peer group call she wants to. Hello, Paige. <laughs> Good morning. Um, like one of the other uh, attendees this morning, uh, I'm just interested in gleaning tips and tricks, um, because with a huge board and um, a larger staff, uh, and then with the community engagement that we do, just feel like I need to make sure that 
um, we're making those those times as uh, productive and as engaging as possible. Glad to be here. All right, very good. Um, off screen right now because he's about to use his camera to help me out uh, for a minute, but. Uh, my son is with us, Clayton Jinx. If you see his name on the screen, Clayton is our content manager here at the Jinx Perspective, and uh, he's going to be using um, he's going to be using his phone to show you some of the equipment that I'm going to be sharing with you here first up. So, uh, did I miss any? Oh, I see uh, Lee, Lee, Leah Crosby. Want to introduce yourself? So sorry I'm late and that I have a party background that hasn't changed since my last meeting. Right. <laughs> my name is Leah Crosby and I work with Charleston County First Steps. I'm the program office manager, but I also do some trainings for um, our parents. So I thought this would be a good thing to learn about. Awesome. Welcome to the call. Also, I see Alana Jordan with Together SC has joined us. Good morning, Alana. Good morning, everyone. Hi. If you don't know me, I am the um, membership and development director for Together SC. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Did is anyone here that has not introduced themselves that I just don't see on my screen? Hi, Patrick. This is Vet Rogers. Well, oh, you are consulting services. Hi. Hi, Vet. Hi. Um, as a, I'm a contract CFO. I'm working with nonprofits on their um, various financial needs, and I'm based out of Columbia. Fantastic. Yeah. Sorry, I missed you. Anybody else? All right. So uh, a couple of things before we get going, let me share with you that we are meeting now. We're, we're on a schedule now with the Consultant Collaborative, and we're meeting every other month right here on Zoom with programming. Uh, so our next meeting is going to be in June. And uh, Clay Grayson is uh, going to share with us some of the legal aspects of being in the consultant world. So I think we're all going to want to be at that. Uh, I think in August, if I'm not mistaken, we have Jada Willis. Um, and then we're going to keep going from there. We are open to some programming ideas. So if you have a program that you believe, a, a topic, a presentation, some expertise, you believe you could share with other consultants with the collaborative that would be of value to all of us, um, shoot me an email or shoot Desmond A an email and say, hey, I got a, I got a program idea I'd, I'd be happy to deliver. And let's uh, let's see what that is and, and fill out that schedule. I, we can go out as far as we can go all the way through 2024 on our schedule, but we're intending to meet about every other month. And uh, in the meantime, if you need anything out of the consultant collaborative or if you have questions, uh, please just reach out to Desmond A or myself or really any of the other members of the leadership team. I will say um, we had a great gathering at the summit. It wasn't huge. Um, there weren't, weren't a ton of uh, consultants at the summit this year, but we had a great collaborative uh, gathering with some ideas on programming and things that we can do. So we'll be excited about sharing those along the way as we go. Um, Okay, let's get uh, let's get going. I'm gonna. So this is a um, this workshop was billed as tech tech tools and tips, um, and really my favorite tech tools and tips that I use a lot and that I find um, are somewhat unique to a lot of the consultants I talk with. I've done this session in person probably three times, including I think twice with Together SC. And I keep getting asked to do it again. And people ask me things like, you know, how, what are you using for your podcast? And what are you using for your YouTube channel? And, and uh, what's that mind mapping software you use? It's really cool. So uh, just a few of those things. We'll, we'll, we'll hit your smartphone app a little bit. We'll hit the computer a little bit. We'll hit some audio video stuff just a little bit. And then um, I'll try to leave room at the end to get some of your favorite tools and tips. So if you've got a particular set of, uh, um, tools or technology or apps or anything that you like to use in your work, um, please let us know. Um, so we're going to start. Clayton, ha if you look at Clayton's screen, you might even want to blow that screen up. You can click on it and highlight that, Clayton Jinx, and you will see, here I am. Everybody see me? Everybody can see that screen, that video? Oh, okay. So we have to change the view. Yeah, you might want to change the view to... Um, if you if you click on the three little dots here i'll do this no that's good there i didn't know i could do that i, I just learned something new in zoom 
Okay, so this is um, Clayton shooting me at my screen here. And uh, I wanted to start by showing you a lot of people say, man, you've got this like super good camera image and and the lighting is great and you've got this background. And when you move around, you don't like your face doesn't blur and half of you disappear while you're you're using your virtual background. How do you do that? So I want to start by showing you my setup for Zoom. And part of the reason is because um, I have a podcast. So I produce the podcast right here. Everything's done. This board right here that my hands are on is called a roadcaster. And I'm going to put, by the way, I've got a, a document that I'm going to send everyone with the links to every single one of these tools. So um, there's a bundle that you can get, but this is really easy to use. It's like a soundboard, but it's only got about four channels plus a computer channel, a smartphone channel and a Bluetooth channel. It's got spaces for, um, you know, for music. Uh, in fact, I don't know if this will work or not, but like my, my, it, when I'm doing a podcast, I do it all live right here. I just hit record. It starts recording. And when I'm ready to hit the introduction, it sounds like this. Did that work? Can you hear that? Welcome to the Leadership Window podcast with Dr. Patrick Jinks. Each week through a social sector lens, Patrick interviews leaders and experts. So that's just hitting hitting a button. I've got my outro music. Uh, if I want to, uh, I've got some interesting sounds on here, such as, uh, let's see. Um, you know, laugh track, applause. <laughs> you guys hearing those? Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, we're hearing it. Yeah, so I do, so this is where I do the podcast. I don't do any editing really on the podcast. I started out, I go start to finish. The, um, what I did is I bought a bundle. So I bought this with this microphone up here that I'm actually talking into right now. When I'm doing the podcast, I get right in this microphone. I just pull it down. It's got one of these, um, these sort of uh, moving arms on it. And I keep it out of screen when I'm doing the uh, doing Zoom. If I have guests, they sit over here in this chair and they use my second microphone. And um, if I have guests that are not in the studio that are working on, um, uh, we do these on Zoom. And so I've got a, I've got my computer wired into this through USB and their sound is right here off of Zoom. And if they've got a good microphone, they come out really clear. One of the links I'm gonna send you in the document is a link that will um, give you an example of the quality of sound this thing puts out on the podcasts. But I use it, I'm actually going through it right now for Zoom so that um, it's quality sound when I'm on Zoom and uh, I can, you know, raise my volume here. Um, I can um, I can mute myself either on the screen or I can mute it here. It's just a better quality. For the video quality, you'll notice that I'm actually using this camera right here. This is a, an actual professional photography camera. It's a Canon, what is it? 90D, I think. And I use this for my uh, Zoom video. And you see, as he's going around, you see, I've actually got this green screen behind me. And the green screen is what keeps the uh, video looking right. So I, this just pulls down. And it closes up. And I can just pick it up and carry it with me. So if I'm doing a, a workshop somewhere, if I if I want to do headshots, I can just grab that, take that with me to a conference, set up the green screen, do headshots, put any background I want behind me. But I use it for I use it for Zoom calls. Um, if uh, let me switch back real quick and show you my screen real quick. So now if you if you see the where this background is, now you see when I pull my green screen down, you'll see what that what happens. So I'm actually now that's my actual this is this is real this isn't a virtual background. So that's why I use the green screen because if you've ever noticed yourself kind of getting uh, blurry on your virtual backgrounds and things this even goes through my glasses as you can see the green screen actually it actually picks up the image even through my glasses so it's just a lot clearer and here's how I like to think about this when you're doing a Zoom presentation a workshop you you know that you're on stage. I mean, if we were doing a keynote, 
You know, we might want nice lights. We might want a, a spotlight on us. If we're doing a TED talk. There's a background. There's an ambiance. So I use this because if I'm doing a presentation on Zoom, you know, I want to look my best. I'm the presenter. This is the keynote, and I want it to be professional. I also have, I don't know if you noticed, um, but up here I've got this um, ring light. So this is coming right on my face. And, and if you look at my screen, if I turn this off, you can kind of see my face on my screen now, lighting up, turning down. So it just gives just gives a little bit uh, better shot of that. The other thing I do for my, um, and by the way, you can get um, this the, the podcast unit, microphone, headphones, probably everything you need if you ever wanted to do a podcast or just do some nice audio recording. Uh, I'm gonna say about around a thousand dollars. Uh, for the bundle. You can get cheaper stuff. You can get cheaper microphones. My, I, I bought all the high-end stuff, but for about a thousand dollars, you could do that. A lot of people wonder about, um, uh, a lot of people wonder about starting a podcast. You can do it super easy. There's tons of hosting sites, self-done podcasts. You can do them right here. It's, it is, podcasting is not hard. The scheduling it and the discipline is, is what's hard. The last thing I'll show you on this is the camera that I use for my YouTube channel. So if you've seen my YouTube channel, I'll walk around here. Is your mic on? Not yet. You want it on? Yeah, go ahead and turn it on. Thanks. Um, so if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, you've seen this background behind me. What I'm shooting, though, is I'm using this camera, which is another... <laughs> In, and this is my teleprompter. So you just put your phone right here, get a teleprompter app and uh, drop your phone right here and it reflects, shoots right into the camera. This thing just slides right off and that's the teleprompter. Um, so that's what I use for the YouTube channel. I'll send you a link to that as well. Clayton edits our YouTube episodes and makes them look even better. Uh, but I wanted to give you a sense of what I'm using when I'm in the home office and when I'm doing virtual stuff, podcasting, video, and Zoom calls. The, the Zoom call, um, this really, I think, changes the game. for, for the getting Zoom an call, echo. So, to give a look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Desmond A. Uh, is checking the chat. So if I'm missing some questions, let me look here real quick. Nope. There's I don't know if we have any one, questions yet. There's any only questions one question. on this, uh, this part of it? podcasting or video part of it just unmute and jump in um i'll say that the um wando charleston All right. public library let me go to the next oh who, who is talking oh i've got my hold on i'm sorry go ahead that's okay i was just saying that the wando library in mount pleasant actually has a beginner's podcasting setup studio so if you're brand spanking new you can even go to your local library and get help with that Wow, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Great resource. Patrick, <laughs> we also had a question um, asking, where's the stuff for the basic folks? Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, <laughs> like I said, you know, Me, you, Patrick. <laughs> write, write a grant, write a grant for $1,000 and you can have a podcast for your nonprofit. I know, um, pal, the Partners for Active Living in Spartanburg, they have a podcast. I, I think for me, Nonprofits podcasting is a fantastic idea. It is a great way to get your story out there. You can have you can have some of your, your the people that you serve can be on to be interviewed. It's a great way to tell your story on a weekly, biweekly, monthly, however often you want to do it. So you don't have to get the fancy stuff. It looks fancier than it really is. It's just it's a microphone and a mixing board. It, it, that really is it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get to a little bit simpler stuff. Let me um, jump over to this unit right here. This is called a cue ball. And I use this when I have an audience. So if you're doing a workshop, let's say you got 50 people in the workshop, maybe like one of the, the Together SE workshops, 50 to 100 people. This is called a cue ball and it's act, it's foam rubber. So it doesn't, it can't, it can't hurt you and you can't hurt it. It is actually a microphone. And um, it is used instead of passing around a microphone in a room for audience participation, you just toss this around the room. People can catch it. When they catch it, they just talk into this black part right here and the sound comes over the sound system. Um, 
what happens is there is a receiver inside here. It's wireless. It connects to this little foam rubber microphone filter snaps back on and it connects to the receiver then that plugs into whatever sound system you have. So if there's a little soundboard, this plugs right into it. The cue ball connects wirelessly to it. If I'm going to a place that doesn't have a sound system, but it's a small enough room, I actually will carry this little small amp with me and um, and plug it into that. So we can throw the ball around. It's a lot of fun. People love just the idea of catching it. You can toss it two to three times to get to a person in the back of the room. And uh, so it's really interactive. It also, you can buy the, um, the cleaning system, the sterilizing system that comes with it. You put it in a box and there's a sterilizing system, cleans it and sterilizes it in 10 minutes for your next use. So for people that are concerned maybe about some of that other stuff. Um, let me get to the chat real quick. Um, uh, cheap ring lights. Yeah, you can get them cheap. They plug into your USB to your computer or whatever. It's it's really simple. The ring lights are, I mean, really cheap. They don't, they don't, you don't have to buy the really uh, fancy stuff. Um, Betty says she uses Anchor FM for podcasting. Um, I want to say Anchor's free. You can confirm that for me. There are some, some, I think I might've actually tried Anchor at first. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's yeah, so free. Anchor's free, um, and it's basic, it's effective, it doesn't have to be fancy stuff to get out there on a podcast. But I love the cue ball in a room. Um, last thing I want to show you on Clayton's camera is we're going to switch over to the smartphone now, and I've got an app on here called Cam Scanner, and it comes in iPhone, but it also comes in Android. I'm an Android user. Cam Scanner is what I use for... Um, Taking, uh, I, I can, if I like to write notes in my notebook, but I want to capture them, I can scan them with cam scanner. A lot of us use flip charts when we're facilitating and they go taped up on the wall. And instead of scribing all those or taking photos of them that sometimes come out good and sometimes they don't, cam scanner takes the pictures a little bit differently and really effective for using uh, in, um, in a workshop. And I'll show you how this works. Walk out in the hall. So I've got some flip charts on the wall here. And uh, one of them is for consultants. Consultants are cool, awesome, smart, and they're heroes, all right? And coaches are not as smart, but they're still cool and they're still awesome, <laughs> right? So we have a whole wall full of, of these. I'm gonna take pictures of them with my app, but here's the deal. Let's say I'm off to the side. Come over, come over here, Clayton. Let's say I'm off to the side and see how it's crooked? And it's all it's all messed up. Well, when I hit the the picture button, you will see that it actually puts dots around the image. I just hit this OK button. It squares it up for me. It puts it in black and white, makes it super clean. I can say OK. I'm going to add to it. I'm going to come over here and get a shot of this one. Again, it doesn't. Ha I don't have to be straight on. You can see it's crooked. But when I take the picture, it gives me the dots. If I need to move those around, I can, and it squares it up for me. Now all I have to do is say, okay, I can go to a PDF of it and I can send it immediately. I can share it through email, boom. I can send it to the, to the CEO and say, boom, there's the flip charts all in one PDF. So I love Cam Scanner. It is, um, it's really handy for these shots on uh, flip charts and things like that. And uh, I think that's it in terms of what Clayton needs to show us. So thank you, Clayton, for showing us that. He's going to jump off the call, and I'm going to head over and jump back over here to my screen. Any questions on cam scanner or cue ball? Uh, oh, yes, uh, I do use the premium. Uh, Madeline on cam scanner. Again, it's, it, it isn't that expensive. I'm one of these though, that I pretty much buy the premium to everything. Cause it's not that these apps are not that expensive and, you know, I don't want the ads and I don't want the limited space. Uh, all this stuff is stored in the cloud. So I don't have to worry about any of that. Um, notes in iPhone also does the same thing Leah says. So that's good. 
Yeah, Melissa uses cam scanner for the flip charts. By the way, it it will do full color as well. So when I'm using my um, when I'm using my white my blackboard back here, uh, I, I I'll get it and I'll I'll um I'll shoot a picture of it. I'll cam scan it in color, put it in PDF, and then I can erase it and reuse the board. Patrick, tell us about your blackboard. Oh, the blackboard I got from Clayton actually. He it's a um it's just a glass. It's really big. It covers a huge portion of this wall. It's a dry erase board that's got neon markers and it's glass and it's super heavy. But Clayton had it. And uh, when he moved to his next apartment, he didn't have a place to put it. And so he gave it to me. And um, I love it. I love it. It's, a, yeah. it's just a, a, a another dry erase board. And sometimes I'll use that as my background because you will notice that it's blurry. Right. So what I do here is I'll turn off when I'm using the, it's it, one, it's blurry and two, it's reflecting light. So what I'll do is I will turn off my ring light so that you don't see the, uh, mm -hmm. you don't see that. And then I've got this overhead light that's still on. So I'll use my, um, I'll use my Alexa app who I call uh, uh, by a different name and I'll just turn the lights to, to do video. So I'll say Ziggy, turn on alternate low in office. And just like technology, it doesn't work. Ziggy, <laughs> turn on alternate low in office. There it goes. Oh, there she so, goes. Okay. So then the then the light dims and, and I'm good. And I'll I'll use my now you can see that it's blurry. That's because of the quality camera I'm using. If I back away from it, it'll autofocus on the board. Mm. And if I step back in here, it's now it's focused on me. And I do that because I don't always want people to be able to read what's on here. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that there's usually anything uh, too, too big, but or too uh, confidential, but yeah, that's the, that's the board. When I'm doing a presentation like this, I often like to use the green screen and uh, turn all my stuff back on. Um, anything else on that? How do you create the backdrop on the green screen? Ooh, I'm going to show you that. Um, that's on, uh, that's on the next thing we're going to, uh, not the next thing, but we are going to cover that on how I got this image. Um, this was a tech workshop, so I wanted a background that was kind of techy. All right, so let's go to, um, let me go to the next piece of work that I want to get to here. I want to go to this program called Simple Mind because uh, this is, hang on one second. How do I undo the spotlight here? Not be spotlighted. Um, Hopefully you're seeing a screen share now and not my video. We we are. Yes. Okay. So I've got this. Uh, this is this is my mind mapping software. I use this a lot. It is my. I, I would say it's my number one software that I use. It's called Simple Mind. Again, I'm going to send you the the document. I'm going to send everybody the document on this. Um, I'll drop it in the chat box before we're off the line. But mind mapping is just a great thinking tool. So we use it in strategic planning. We use it in, I'll take it to conferences on my smartphone and just brainstorm on it when I'm thinking. You can build org charts on it. You can organize thoughts really in any kind of way. Great for Zoom meetings to sort of share your screen and use a mind map as you build things rather than use a, a, a whiteboard or whatever. Um, so for example, this, this headline here is um, the main item is, Consultant Collaborative April 10th Tech Talk, Tech talk Call. So let's say what we're doing here. First, we were going to do welcome and introductions. So we move that bullet. Let's see, I have this. Got too many things going on. All right, so I can move this around anywhere I want. The next thing is, uh, what did we do? We did the podcast equipment. So if I were building a, an agenda, for example, for this, and then we did the uh, the video equipment. 
And we did the cue ball. So <clears throat> we can take these and we can we can move them anywhere we want. If I decide that really podcast and video equipment really should go into one bullet called audio video. I can create the audio video and then I just drag podcast equipment in there and I drag video equipment in there. Now all my audio video is in the same, same bullet. If I want to organize this a little bit better, once I'm done, I can come over here and say, let's make this look all nice and organized and pretty. And it'll do it like this. And I can still move things around. I can decide that this whole audio video thing goes under welcome and introduction. Now I'm moving things around. So it's great for just organizing thought, brainstorming. It is, um, there's iPad, iPhone, Android, PC. I want to say this is under $100 to get the, you know, the, the paid version of this. But I use it extensively. Some of you have seen me use it. Madeline has seen it a lot because we use it in, in their meetings as well. So, um, yeah, that's Simple Mind. There's a whole lot of more complex things that we'll do. It will link to other mind maps. Um, and yeah, there are a lot of them. Uh, Melissa uses, um, what is it, Coggle? Uh, when planning a board retreat to map out outcomes, what do you want to get out of the event? Agenda topics, everything. So I love mind mapping and I just use it for everything. If I'm writing, a, I, I used it when I started writing on my book, I started using it as an outline. I definitely use it for conference workshops and things like this, building agendas. And it is really good to just put it on a big screen in a group of people and have us all build together. And people get to say, hey, move that one over here or this one needs to be changed. So I, I love that tool. Um, any questions on that one? All right, let me bounce here to what I'm going to use next. Next tool I want to talk about, I, there's a lot of different versions of this, but I like to use uh, Trello. So Trello, let's see, I might have to stop that share and start over. So many of you use this in your organizations. It's basic project management, but it is really basic. So if I um, I start, I built a little demo uh, board here called uh, Client Flow. So in this card, I have urgent work. So anything urgent. So I've got clients in here. Um, here's Acme Nonprofit, Zebra Fund, Catalyst Agency. Okay, so I have any urgent work to do on that. I can open that card. And I can put in here what it is I need to do, whatever activity I need. Uh, just a great client tracker. Uh, if I if it's no longer urgent and I've done what I need to do, but it's and it's still on track, but I don't want to lose it, then what I'll do is I will take the Acme nonprofit and I'll drag it over here to the on track board. So that one is now on track, and I can just keep my clients flowing in, you know. Catalyst agency, I'll move that to semi-urgent. If I get on a call and I have a prospect, for example, I can come over here to the prospect board. I can add it and say, uh, agency A prospect. I can write whatever I need in here. I can attach documents. Um, I can write a description of what it is. I can label it. I can put a color label on it if it's... Uh, a really, a really hot one, I can make it red and it'll just show up that way on the board. It'll show up with this red label on it. Once it's not a prospect anymore, if, if they decide, well, yeah, we're going to go with someone else. <laughs> uh, we've none of us have ever had that happen, right? <laughs> um, we move this agency A, we move them over to inactive. Or if we end up um, signing a contract with them, we move them over here under urgent work. And then we open it back up again and we write what that work is. We need to put together a contract or we need to put together the first body of work. I use, um, I use Trello for my book reading plan. So I've got potential books to read over here on the far left column. And when I'm ready to move it into the queue and it's going to be the next book I read, I move it there. When I start reading it, I just drag that book over into reading. When I'm done reading it, I just drag it over into read. Keeps me um, up to date on, on what books I've read, what books are next. 
when a new book comes into mind that I might want to try, I put it over here under the potential books to read. Um, any kind of project that you have, you can basically create these project flows on it. But this is called Trello. And again, I'll, I'll have a link to all these on the um, on the document that I send out. I like your book club list. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually a little outdated now. I got to I got to add a few things to it. But. Um, yeah, so let's see. How would you compare Trello to Asana? Madeline, I, I don't know as I haven't used Asana, but Monday, Asana, uh, what is it, Base Camp? Is that one of them? There's more complex ones like Microsoft Project. Um, Trello is super, super simple. I can't, someone else on the call might, might unmute yourself and speak to this comparison. I don't use them for teams because it really is just me. Um, so I, I, I just use it as an individual and I use Trello because it's so, so simple and I like the interface and you can design your own backgrounds. You just, you just create a board and you just drag things from one to the next. And, um, it's why I use simple mind because I have a simple mind. <laughs> so, so I want something that's easy, but really powerful. Um, let's see what, um, any, anybody can speak to Asana versus Trello. Or, or another one that you use that's similar to that? Anybody else use a different one? Uh, Melissa says Asana is more robust, but you get what you pay for, so you pay a little more. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right. Um, we're going to move to uh, the last piece that I want to talk about, and it's a new one. And some of you may have already kind of played around with this some, but we all know about the artificial intelligence. We've all heard of chat GPT. Uh, I'm just wondering if anyone here has used chat GPT besides me. Yeah, Kim's used it. Um, I'm going to give you a few things. I'm just going to show you uh, a few things about ChatGPT and ways that you can use it because I'm telling you, if you haven't seen it, it'll blow your mind, okay? So get ready for this one. And by the way, um, whoever it was that said I was using fancy stuff, this is, it, ChatGPT, <laughs> is ChatGPT is free. Uh, uh -huh. It's just a web-based platform. Now, I don't think it will be free for that much longer, but it is free right now. The free version, though, sometimes it's not available. You'll go on it and it'll say there's too many people on it right now. You can't use the free version. So in, uh, in my typical form, I pay for it. And um, I've only just started using it, so I don't know how long I'll pay for it. I think it's $20 a month, to be honest with you, for the paid subscription, but you get all the bells and whistles you get no in interruptions. And I just wanna show you some of the things that ChatGPT can do. So can everybody see the, the screen, the dark web browser screen here? Yes. Um, maybe I'll get out of dark mode here. Oh, I thought I did, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a few prompts of things you can put in here. And I've, I've pre-populated what I wanna put in here. So let's say, I need a fa I need copy for a Facebook ad promoting my upcoming HR 101 workshop in Columbia. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but down here at the bottom, I've put that copy in. I've said, I need ad copy for a Facebook ad promoting my upcoming HR 101 workshop in Columbia. I hit go and it says, sure, here's a draft. Attention all business owners and managers in Columbia. Are you struggling with human resources? Our workshop can help. Join us for a comprehensive one-day training session that covers the fundamentals. You'll learn about recruiting, hiring, employee benefits, performance ma management, and more. Our expert instructors will provide practical advice. <laughs> Whether you're a seasoned HR professional or new to managing people, this workshop is perfect for you. It's also a great opportunity to network with other business leaders and share best practices. Don't miss out on this valuable learning experience. So this was an AI-generated ad I can take it, I can copy it, I can put it in a Word document and tweak it now. I don't have to use it as is, but it is pretty powerful that it actually did this. 
Now, here's, uh, here's here. another thing I like. I'm going to say now translate that to Spanish. <laughs> this is scary. And there you go. By the way, my <laughs> wife who speaks fluent Spanish, I, I printed one of these out and I said, tell me how, how good this is. She goes, man, this is really good. <laughs> this translation is really good. But again, you may have to tweak it. But if you need multiple languages, you can do that. Um, let me give you another idea of what ChatGPT can do. Now I know why this was so controversial in terms of college students using this to write papers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to that here in just a second, uh, uh, Betty. So okay. here's I'm putting in a prompt here. Give me five social media posts for the week, all focused on the most important elements of nonprofit fundraising. Okay, so I want I want a, a social media post uh, for each day of the week. I hit send. Here they come. Post number one. Mm. Post number two. Post number three. There they are. Don't forget to say thank you. Expressing gratitude to your donors. Uh, did you know that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is one of the most effective ways to raise money? I mean, these, the content is not, I mean, it's real content. It's good content. Uh, when it comes to fundraising, storytelling is essential by sharing. So if you're a fundraising consultant and you want to keep content out there, you don't have to use this word for word. You can take it and tweak it and make it your own. I use it for idea generation. So if mm -hmm. I'm stuck, I'm really just stuck on thinking about something this will help get me off dead center. And because these ideas will lead to other ideas for me. So it's a great tool to get unstuck, but it says, sure, here are five social media posts for the week, all focused on the most important elements of effective nonprofit fundraising. Now here's something I haven't tried. Okay, translate those to Japanese. <laughs> I haven't tried this. <laughs> see, what that, see what that does. There you go. How about that? Gives me all five posts again translated to Japanese. And I can stop generating here if I need to. Uh, let me give you another one. Um, I really like this one, folks. You're going to love this. I'm going to tell Chat GPT that I need an executive coaching agreement for a client. Include several services and deliverables. Use the word coachee for client. Also include a disclosure that coaching is not counseling. Go. How about that? How about this disclosure, by the way? Uh, Coachee acknowledges that coaching is not counseling, therapy, or a substitute for medical or psychological treatment. Coach is not licensed to provide counseling, therapy, or medical services. Coachee agrees to seek appropriate professional advice in these areas if necessary. That's artificial intelligence building that for me. I can take this, copy it, move it over to a Word document, put my brand on it, tweak it, add the language that I need to add to it. Um, so someone asked, which one am I using? I'm, I'm using the official sort of chat GPT, I think. It's called OpenAI, though, on the, on the uh, web. And again, I, I'll link to this in the document that I'll drop for you guys in a minute. But uh, OpenAI.com is the, uh, this is actually chat.openai.com. And there's a couple of different, interfaces for this. You can go to what's called the playground here and you can kind of play around with, with some different things. Somebody shoot one at me. What do you, what do you want? What, what would you want for your consulting for, for anything? What, what kind of idea or topic or content? Somebody, somebody fire one at me. Let's just try one real quick. Somebody I'm mentioned that it's so, oh, go ahead. Considering hiring an interim executive director. 
uh, for nonprofits, um, what to look for, or I don't know. Okay, here we go. What to look for when hiring a nonprofit interim executive director? Let's do tips on what to look for. Look for, uh, look for experience, someone with extensive experience in the sector who understands the unique needs of nonprofits. Look for leadership skills, communication skills. A successful nonprofit interim executive should be able to effectively communicate with staff, volunteers, and donors. Strategic thinking, look for someone who can think strategically, has the ability to develop and implement effective plans. Financial acumen, financial resources, ask them to provide a list of resources they can access to help the organization professionalism, flexibility. I don't know how many it's going to give me, probably 10. This is really scary what it's doing. It's so, helpful, so, but it's scary. <laughs> yeah. So a couple of the of the controversial pieces behind AI. One is, you know, if you've ever watched the Terminator, you know what Skynet is, right? Is one day is, <laughs> is AI going to like launch the nuclear codes, you know, <laughs> like, you know, is it going to in, infiltrate all of our systems and I mean, we talk about this stuff like it's science fiction, but look what I'm doing here. And this is this is like I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, so that's that's one controversy. It's just the whole fear of it in general and you know, AI taking over. We're using it all the time anyway. I mean, we got autonomous cards, uh, cars and and even our smartphones and the things we're doing now, it's all artificial intelligence. The one of the big controversies currently is around plagiarism. So if you look about whether or not chat GPT is plagiarism, it technically is not. It is not taking from someone else's work. The, 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 it, is, it, is drawing from a, from, it is drawing from knowledge and information that's out there, but it is an outright plagiarizing things. It literally is creating these things. What's happening though is, for example, in academics, schools are starting to, there, there's software that now can detect even whether it was AI that generated it. Just based on some of the phrasing, it just kind of picks up a certain tone and says, yeah, this is whatever. Um, this supposedly is 95% plagiarism free. Hmm. So you do have to still be careful. You got to approach it with caution. Things like, you know, social media posts are probably okay. The consultant agreement that I just put out there, probably okay. That's usually language everybody uses. Um, but there are, there's going to be a lot of, of um, there's going to be a lot of work in figuring out this, the, the controversies around how are we going to navigate this? Because it ain't going away. This is only going to get deeper and deeper. Um, so how do we navigate it? Right now, it's been of pretty cool use to me, as you can see. There's there's a lot that you can do with it. I'm going to give you one more example, and then we're going to open the floor. Uh, we're going to 9:45, by the way. Um, all of our consultant calls are are an hour and 15 minutes. I understand if you have to go, but just just so you know, um, I want to hear what, if there are any other ideas uh, or favorite tools that you all use. But before I move on to that, I want to give you one more thing that um, that AI can do. Uh, from an image standpoint, if I can find it again. Uh, so if I go to image generation, there is a program called DAL E, D A L L dash E, and that is the that is the um, image interface behind this. I want to share something with you. I'm going to do a, another screen share here. Uh, Quick question while you're doing that, um, Patrick. Yep. So how do you, I, I saw where you were able to generate um, like just content for, let's say marketing or something. Um, how do you, how do you, I think you may have already alluded to it. Is it changing, you know, putting in your own words and, and tweaking it yourself so that it doesn't look like everybody else's? Because my thought was, if it's giving it to me, anybody else who would put in the same if uh, requests, it would generate the same generic response. And I'm so, gonna yeah, great question. I'll show you in a minute. If I hit generate and it gives me that, mm -hmm. if I hit regenerate, 
it'll give me a slightly different version of it. Okay. And I can do that over and over and over and it'll tweak it and give me different versions of it. It's not going to spit the exact same language out every time. It's going through an algorithm that comes up with the content. The same with images. And I'm going to show you that. Um, do you see my, my PowerPoint presentation yes. on the screen? Okay. These images that I have on here, this was a, a workshop about uh, developing and, and delegating to senior leaders. And you'll notice the images that I'm using here are like kind of almost abstract. They're watercolors. They're all watercolor drawings. And, you know, define leadership and self-determination. You can kind of see the images that I've chosen for that. I've chosen this solo guy for autonomy, um, competence. I've, I've got all these different, this is one I wanted a group. These are all AI generated. I went to Dolly and I just said, show me, I, in this one, I said, show me a, a diverse group of leaders around a table. Um, on this one, I said, show me a, a, a diverse group of leaders standing in line, <laughs> right? Um, on this one, I said, this, this graphic of this triangle, I said, give me a watercolor drawing of a triangle using red, green, and blue, because those are my brand colors. And it created this, this cool looking graphic, and I just typed text inside of it. This is my delegation triangle. Um, here I said, show me, I, I said, um, give me a watercolor image of a counseling session. Give me a watercolor image of a woman asking a question. This is what I got. So I want to show you, by the way, this, um, my, my background on my screen, somebody asked about my green screen background. Um, I asked Dolly to make that for me. And here's what I actually said. I said, give me a techie background for Zoom and look at the images it gave me. So I picked one. These are, if I ask it to regenerate, it'll give me a bunch of different images. I can choose my colors. I, I chose colors that went with the Together SC logo. So if you see my background, you'll see the, you'll see the Together SC logo right here. Now I added that but I, I wanted the color scheme that kind of went with that. So you can kind of match the brand. These are my images that came up when I was doing my presentation. And I might not have liked them all. I wanted these up arrows, for example. I wanted them red, green, and blue, but I wanted them in, in watercolor. I asked it earlier today, this morning I said, give me a photo of a homeless man where everything is black and white except his hat. Take a look at that. The screen's not moving. It's not moving. Yeah. Uh, you don't see a. We, we're on the question slide. Question and contribution. Oh, rats. There you go. Oh, my gosh. Okay. By the way, if I don't like that one. I can use this one. I don't like that one. That one's interesting. That's not what I asked for, but <laughs> in fact, you see what I wrote. I need a black and white photo of a homeless man with a shopping cart. Make his hat red, everything else black and white. So it didn't, it didn't follow the instruction there, but it followed it here. His face is a little bit red, which I kind of like. But here are all those tech images it gave me. Mm. When I asked for my background, here are all those watercolor images it gave me when I was doing my presentation, my, my brand colors on the arrows. So it, it is a, it's an extremely powerful tool. I've started to use it, um, it and it's, it's becoming a favorite for me. Oh, um, Miriam, I'm glad you brought this one up in the chat. Uh, so let me go back to my slides for a minute. <clears throat> So I have another program I use called Slick Text, and I can actually create a text word. So instead of printing out my workshops, instead of printing out the, the handouts when I've got 50 people in a room, I just come to this and I create, uh, this, this goes into a lot of detail, but I, I create a flow where um, you can either text the word slides to my number, or you can just um, use this QR code 
and it will give you the slides. It will give you the handouts. It will take you to the to a site where you just put in your name and email address. So what I like about it is I don't have to print a billion copies. The other thing I like about it is I now have a name and an email address. I can right. send you my <laughs> can send you my newsletter. You can uns and I tell people that by the you know people ask, hey, is this going to put me on an email list? The answer is yes. It is going to put you on there. You get the slides, and if you don't want to stay on it unsubscribe but it, it connects people to the podcast and the video and and all that that i use so yeah, those I, are some i'm sorry somebody jump in that was, that was miriam so i um i, I usually use i usually use the qr code for handouts and things like that but i've gotten questions afterwards about slides i never thought to use the qr code for the slides themselves and I integrate uh, HubSpot into this whole process so that I can capture name and email and all that sort of thing. So that's part of the flow process. But thank you for that because I just didn't think about it. Yeah. So uh, back to a, a few more questions on chat GPT. Um, Melissa says it, it threatens trust. How can we help clients and others trust our written word when this creates uh uh, deep skepticism and original thought. Uh, again, Melissa, my thought on that is it, it really is like having someone help us generate ideas. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't normally want to use this stuff word for word. Um, I would want to tweak it. You'll find as you play around with it that most of the content it generates is not something you wouldn't say. <laughs> you know, it's good content. And I, you know, it's it's just like having a thought partner. It's just like any other computer technology we use it's a it's a help we do have to be careful with it so uh you know i wouldn't write a book on chat gpt right i wouldn't i wouldn't even write a blog post on chat gpt but i might ask chat gpt to generate a blog post for ideas um, that i can then play off of um, madeline asked but aren't we using words that on our own when we use it what does that mean for the hiring process speech writing eventually uh, folks will recognize you know, read this stuff through. It's pretty good stuff. I'm telling you, the the wording is really good. Uh, I will tell you, when you're on Facebook and you're look, you're probably looking at most of what you're looking at is probably AI. Um, these these bots are, you know, they're they're out there. My my thing is, it's a tool. It's a tool we have to be careful with. The tool can be a weapon, or the tool can can be put to good use um, if it's used in an in an ethical manner. Um, there's, there's guidelines. I'm not here to tell you to use it or not use it. I'm just here to tell you there are some guidelines for it. I think it's useful. I think we have to be judicious in, in how we use the tools that we're using, but, um, I will, I will stop right there because I want to, I want to leave a few minutes, um, to hear any other, um, I'd love to hear from someone who uses. what's your favorite piece of technology. We don't have time for for everyone to answer that question, there's 20 people on the call. But if you've got one that you use as a consultant that you think you know we might want to know about, drop them in the chat box and um, and speak up. Tell us what they are. Any ideas? Well, people are coming up with that because I don't have any favorite tech. I do have a question about those Lucid charts and yes. like creating logic models and such. How is that different from what you showed us in? which was the tool mind mapping. Right. Yeah, mind mapping is pretty limited to just being a mind map. The interface you see is what you see. Lucid has a number of different things. There's Lucid Spark, Lucid Chart, Lucid I think there's several different things. I subscribe to the whole package. It's Lucid is a little bit more like um some of the smart art that you find in PowerPoint for example, but a but a souped up version of it. Um, will you where, add the link to when you send out your information? Will you add the Lucid link? I mean, is that a brand or I mean, this is how tech illiterate I am. No, no, is it's that a brand or is that uh, Lucid dot? Just go to let's see. Is it Lucid dot app? what's popping up for me. Um, I think I would go to, yeah, go to lucid.co. I'll put it in the chat. Lucid.co. That'll take you to everything you need to know about Lucid. Thank you. Uh, there's another tool I use periodically and I can't remember. Oh, SmartDraw. 
I use smart draw as well. They're, they're all basically the same thing. Just a little, some of them are a little more, more robust. Um, Lucid Scale, Lucid Spark, and Lucid Chart are the three products from Lucid. And they got some really great templates. Oh, I missed, uh, it's, I misspelled that, lucid.co. Anybody else? Got one you want to share? Uh, let me. I'm trying to figure out how to drop a file in this chat so that I can give you this document. Well, for some reason, even for me, I don't know if this is for others, but like when you, the lucid.co is not showing up in the chat. Yeah, it's not. Oh. Uh, hold on. There are four icons. In Patrick, it looks like you're sending it to the waiting room participants. That's why anyone can't. That's why everyone can't see it. All right. There, there you go. And then I'm going to drop a, uh, a document in here for you. And that will give you the links to all of the tools that I went through. Uh, yes, Madeline uses Calendly. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people do. I use Time Trade, which is a, a similar thing. Uh, fantastic scheduling, especially when you're on your own like I am. Um, it's, just, it's just fantastic. I can create all kinds of different events. Um, if you want to do a discovery call with me or a coaching, I use, I use the links for all my coaching sessions. People can just go and pick the next session. You can brand it. You can, um, uh, there's, there's lots of really cool stuff on there. Um, so yeah, um, Patrick, yep. Patrick, sorry. Um, I'm driving and I can't access the chat. Will you be sending the links out as a follow-up by yeah. email as well? Okay, yeah, great. Desmond, Thank you. we can do that, right? Desmond, a? Well, um, she she's on mute or something, but yeah. Well, it's we'll, Madeline, sure. Um, yeah. We can send it out. And we may also include an evaluation survey. We're trying to get back into just a quick two or three question evaluation. And we'd love you guys to help us test that tool as well. So we'll, we'll be sending it out. Good. I've put a couple of honorable mentions on there. Um, Kim, the teleprompter app, I use two different ones. I use Elegant Teleprompter for the one that I use with my good camera. But you, there are apps that do teleprompter right on your phone. So I don't think I have mine installed. This is a fairly new phone. And I don't think I have it installed on this one. Um, but it's called Big View, B-I-G-V-U. And it'll turn your phone into a teleprompter. So if you want to do a video and you you put the camera, you, you know, you put the phone to yourself like you're looking into your camera, but you can read on your phone, you can read your script. And I've done it before and it is very, very effective. It looks awesome, like you're looking you. into the camera. So that's great. Yeah. Um, looking for a survey tool recommendation other than Survey Monkey. I use Survey Monkey extensively, but I use the research.net. Um, um, instead of the Survey Monkey branding, so that comes with a paid version. Um, but I also use a tool called Brilliant Assessments, where I can design my own assessments. Pretty complicated. It's pretty expensive. It's about I don't know twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a year. But I have some proprietary assessments I use in my coaching. So Google Forms, yeah, that's a good one. We use GetFeedback.com. GetFeedback.com. I've seen surveys on that one. Excellent. You guys, Madeline. you want us to pull other suggestions from the chat box and send those out with Patrick's? Yes. Okay. See, I, I, I used to remember having a three dots where you could get all the... You could save the chat yourself. Right, but I don't see it in my... It, it's at uh, the very, very bottom of the chat and it's in light gray. Not, not on mine. It has like a... T text format, screenshot, uh -huh. file, yep. Yep. and 
smile emojis. Oh, well, on mine, the, the three dots are right next to that. Yeah, that's not there. And uh, then on the far right, you know, everyone. Unless uh, I, do you have to be in the... I don't know. Maybe you have to be an, an admin or a host on it. it yeah, it's, it's usually in the settings where you allow the uh, participants to be able to download the chat. So if um, it's not set up that way through Zoom, then you won't be able to get to it. Okay. Let me see if I can change that. Or maybe Desmond A can change it. Well, folks, um, I just want to thank all of you. Hopefully this was this was useful, got your brain flowing, maybe a couple tools that you can use. Um, I tried to, to, to run the gamut between some of the more, you know, complex ones and some of the simpler ones. And um, again, the, the sheet is there. We'll email it out to everybody. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to, to shoot me or Desmond A an email if you've got a, um, a proposal for us to, to do one of these workshops for us. I uh, do have a consult. question. The um, the the Monday the alternate months is that always on Monday and the second Monday? What what is the schedule? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we've sort of landed on. And the next one will be June, and it's going to be Clay Grayson. And I I hope to have the write up for you today, but I don't. But um, it's basically going to be on business modeling, how to uh, do the business planning for your um your consulting business. Uh, legal aspects of that, but also, you know, go wide, go deep, go narrow, um, pricing, lots of things that he's figured out with his very sort of niche um, legal practice, which is serves nonprofits exclusively. So, so. June, June 12th at 830, is that? So we'll put the dates of all of them in the follow up email. Okay, great. Thank you. And I think um, Jada has volunteered to do two in August and then next spring. We're trying to plan through June of next year so you guys can really, you know, plan ahead for them. Um, so if anyone else, we'd love to have someone for um, August. I think we the next up would be October. I think Kathleen Brady is going to do one in October. Oh, excellent. So good, 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 good. And I see a lot of faces or at least names of folks I haven't met yet. So um, if you don't know me, Mary Dell, Desmond A, Alana, any of our, the Together SC team, the, um, the more we know about you, the more we can help uh, connect you with the folks in our, our world. So please, uh, and I will start my video to say hi, uh, please reach out to us if you don't. And oops, wrong camera. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you being here. Great to see everyone. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Great job, Patrick. Thank see you. See you next thank time. You.